LSD, MDMA, mushrooms. These words are either associated with the counterculture of the 60s or with the EDM rape culture of the millennials, but the reality is that they actually are having a resurgence in medical research because for many, many years, you know, federal authorities in the United States have actually listed these drugs as little to no medicinal use, but the latest research says that changing opinions on these drugs have actually paved the way to create new protocols of investigation that have nothing to do either with raves or with counterculture movements. Michael, I'm very excited about the future of, of psychedelic research because it's been proven that many of these substances have helped and benefited many of those suffering from alcoholism, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, uh, grief, in the correct environment with the right researchers around you helping you guide this experience, it's been proven that it's very helpful, yet still they are one of the most prosecuted drugs in the country. Jose, this is a long time coming, and people have known that psychedelic drugs were helpful in uh, reducing cravings for like alcohol, Iboga in particular is good with that, from what I understand, um, facing death, uh, post uh, stress after horrible accidents or being in war. So the power of the psychedelic is a revel revelatory experience. And guess what? It's cheap. If you look at the drugs that are on the market versus psychedelics, this makes a great deal of economic sense. So this is a long time coming. They are drugs that we've known about for a long time, and it's time that we got our act together and started using them within a uh, laboratory sense to and help I, people. And I think you use a word that is very important to understand the history of the war on drugs, revelatory. Yeah. The early experiences that Tim Leary had and these, these forefronters of the 60s that were developing this, this, this research on the use of, of LSD as a mind-opening tool to, to understand you know, reality at a different level was what the government feared and that's why they were labeled countercultural because they were proposing this alternate way. Now, fast forward 30, 40 years, and we see that finally the government says, well, if we just look at the data, we just look at the data, the data says, oh, there's something there that we need to look at closely because it might be beneficial, like you said, economically, and also in terms of changing that war on drugs, that brings me to something that I always, you know, I'm vigilant of, the incarceration of people. It's, it's something that goes hand in hand for me. The incarceration aspect is, is another story and, and, and one that we need to touch on as much as we do and more. Um, that's an industry unto itself. But let's get back to the psychedelics. Ladies and gentlemen, these, this is not cocaine. This is not methamphetamine. This is something else that does something else. And it helps ease people into acceptance, perhaps, of uh, the fact that they have a terminal illness or getting over something that happened to them in the past. So I applaud this, and it's a 21st century idea to accept these drugs in a medical sense. I agree with you. We want to know your opinion. Do you think that they should be conducting, like they will, long and, and large scale tests on these drugs and the benefit in medical terms? Let us know your thoughts below, and if you haven't, please subscribe to the Lib TV.